Ah, we're recording. So week 11, 11.56, we have a two-stage cascade refrigeration system, right? So the two of them hooked up to each other, right? Before I even continue reading, you can see that here on where we have this um, condenser and evaporator working together, together you can see that we have do a little zoom in there. We have evaporator over here. We have a condenser over here. And you can see that we're going to have energy going from one to the other, right? So as long as we do an energy balance there, we can relate those two guys. So let's see. Consider a two-stage cascade refrigeration system operating between the pressure limits of 1.4 and 160 uh, kilopascals with refrigerant 134. Okay, so that those are our pressure uh, limits. So that's going to be the highest pressure in the system, the lowest pressure. So therefore, we go ahead and go to here, and you can put this guy, which is the highest pressure we're going to have on, on the system is 1.4 megapascals, and the lowest part is over here, right? So this is going to be 160, yeah, 160 kilopascals. Okay, so one and four is 160, six and seven, 1.4 megapascals. Um, heat rejection from the lower cycle to the upper cycle takes place in an adiabatic counter for heat exchanger where the pressure of the upper, upper and lower cycles are 0.4 and 0.5. So upper is 0.4 and lower is 0.5. So over here is 0.4 and over here is 0.5 megapascals. Okay, and it's an adiabatic system. So what does that mean? It means that there's no Q that can leave the system, no Q that can enter the system, right? So it's perfect for our energy balance. In other words, energy balance. It's perfectly zero, therefore, um, let's put it this way, all the energy, um, energy on the up has to be equal to the energy on the down, right? All the energy that the one on the bottom is given away is going straight into the upper cycle. Um, in both cycles, the refrigerant is a saturated liquid at the condenser exit. So the condenser exit over here, so this is saturated liquid. And the condenser exit over here, so this is saturated liquid. Um, and what else? In a saturated vapor at the compressor inlet. So the compressor inlet means that this guy is a saturated vapor. That vapor. And this guy is saturated. And the isentropic efficiency of the compressor is 80%. Well, it doesn't say which compressor, so we just have to assume it's both compressors. If the mass flow rate of the lower cycle is 11.11 .11 kilograms per, per second determined, the mass flow rate of the upper cycle, the rate of heat removal from the refrigerant space. So guys, Again, what are we after here? Is it QH or is it QL? Without QL. QL, that's it. Without skipping a beat, right? So completely reject this guy here. We're not going to be using it for B, right? He's just asking us QL. And it wants the power, so it wants the kilowatts. And the key coefficient of performance, same thing, right? Coefficient of performance is desired output. In this case, it's QL and over the required input. Awesome. So let's do this. Let's do this. How are we going to do this? Well, this is easier than it looks because we're going to have to define all the states. But first state, we have two things already. It's pretty much defined. The second state we can do by relating the, um, the uh, isentropic efficiencies, right? The, uh, the efficiency of the compressor, which is 80%. This guy has an efficiency of 80%, and this guy has an efficiency of 80%. Isentropic efficiency, right? So we can find state two and six using that. Um, then three and seven pretty much defined, and eight and four as well, because they have the same exact uh, enthalpy as seven and two, respectively. Uh, they're both working on 134A on both sides. So we have the mass flow rate on the bottom one, we just find, okay, fine. So let's find the, um, let's find the states individually. Once we have all the states, we can be happy and solve whatever they're, they're throwing at us. So state one is a saturated vapor. And it's also at 160 kilopascal. So that means we can go straight into table A12, pressure table. 
and you can look at H1 being H of sat gate. Which is two hundred and forty one point forty. You can also read out the entropy that we're going to use for state two, just like before. The entropy of set state as well, three point nine four three. Okay, so state one was as easy as that. State two. Uh, what do we know about state two? Well, for now, we can only calculate two, state two as entropic, right? Because we know the pressure is, what was it, 500? Yeah, 500 kilopascals or 0.5 megapascals. And for the isentropic one, we know that's two equals that's one. So table 812, we'll go to table 812, we're gonna see the entropy is above, so it's gonna be superheated. Superheated means long table, so 813. And you go ahead and interpolate, and we get the isentropic one as we put on the bottom here. Yeah, this is fine. Isentropic one is 264.55. Cool. But there's a but, right? There's a but. Let's see. But, okay. but the entropy, the compressor only has an 80% efficiency. So that means that 80%, so state to actual is going to be related to the 80% over the relationship between H2S minus H1 divided by H2 actual minus H1. And what do we know? We know that H2 actual has to be greater than H2S, right? It has to. So if we do this math and uh, we get it smaller or, or the same, then we'll probably flip this guy here. It's something students do commonly, right? So just remember that it may, needs to make sense by the end of it and we, we'll be fine. Right? So H2A in this case here is 270.4. Indeed, it's greater than 260, so probably the right one. Then state three. We know this guy is a saturated liquid. And we also know the temp pressure of three is 500. So that's easy. Just look at the saturated liquid entropy. And 73.32. Um, H4, same as H3, right? H4. We can go on to state five. It's going to be exactly the same working, exactly the same thing we just did. State five. You know, state five is a saturated vapor. And it's at 400. The Pascals, so H12, You can also grab the S5, the way for six. And know that from five to six would be exactly the same process that we did from one to two, right? Exactly, literally the same, no change whatsoever. The difference between them is just that the pressures are different, but other than that, so state six, I can only calculate for now the isotropic, and my S6 will be equal to S5, and my pressure is 1.4, 1.4 megapascals. Well, well, I know it's heated. I know it's 813. If you make 13, you can wrap with success. Two 
And with this information, I can calculate my state six actual, which I can relate by 80% of the efficiency has to be equal to my H ID minus H one divided by my H two actual minus H one. Should it be H six A, not? Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> Thanks. Do this so many times already. Uh, there you go. Six A and six A. Thank you. And this is not one, this is five. Yes, yes, five, five. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, approximately 300. All right, finish off state seven, state eight are the same in entropy. So we just need to find state seven, state eight will be done. And state seven is a saturated liquid, and it's also at an open point. Right? That's easy. Twelve. Okay. Okay. Eight seven equals eight at liquid, and this is equal to one twenty-seven point twenty-five. which is also equal to eight. Okay, so let's have a look at the whole thing. Okay, so we have entropy for one, entropy for two, entropy for three and four, entropy for five, entropy for six, and entropy for seven, eight. Okay, good. you good to find anything we throw our way. Um, first thing we need to throw our way is what is the mass flow rate of the upper limit? So, A. Uh, we know that at the heat exchanger, like we drew before, so let's do at um, condenser, at the condenser of the upper, condenser up, and evaporator, uh, well, on, on the left, at the condenser of the lower, and the evaporator of the upper. We have conservation of energy. So that means that the mass flow rate of the lower times the what's the difference in energy is from two to three. So H2 minus three has to be equal to the mass flow rate of the upper. And this one is from eight to five, right? So it's two. And we have everything, right? We have the mass flow rate of the lower, we have the entropies also, we can just solve this fellow. This guy will be uh, 0.11, which is the mass flow rate of the lower. Or 270.4 minus 73.32. Divide this whole thing by. Two five five point sixty one minus one hundred and twenty seven point twenty five. So that can come out in the same unit cells. The other, only thing that doesn't have units cut, which is kilograms per second. I've got zero point sixteen eighty nine. Okay, that's part A. Part B, uh, what is the rate of heat supply to your room? Okay, so like you guys told me before, okay. no, right, the wrong one, sorry, wrong one. Uh, what is the rate of heat removal on the refrigerator space? Okay, so that's gonna be QL, and they want in power, so they want QL dot, rate of heat, so it's gonna be, so we need to actually look, right, Wh which of these two guys is QL. Oh, QL is related to the lower cycle. So therefore I need to use the mass of the lower cycle, not the mass of the upper one that we just found, but the 0.11 as opposed to the 0.16. Okay, so will be mass of the lower and it's related to one, two, one and two, right? So 
Um, minus one and four, sorry, one and four. Three two L. Ten eleven. Uh, one is two forty one. Let's do one minus four, so it's all positive and everybody's happy. Nobody's struggling with negative one. Let's just do four. But where is it? Four is four smaller. Three hundred and one sec. One minus four. Oh, one minus four is right. This one's going to be a little bit. One minus four. Because this is two hundred and fifty. Two hundred forty-one point fourteen. Minus four, which is seventy-three point thirty-two in kilowatts, and that's eighteen point forty-six kilowatts. Okay. Last but not least, part C. What is the potential performance of the refrigerator? All right. So this, I'm going to ask you guys to. Answer something. Okay, it's the desired output over the required input. That never changes, right? That's the definition of efficient performance. Now, what we want as a desired output is QL. That's so. That's fine. But what is the required input for this system? It's the work of the lower plus the work of the upper. That's correct, right? So we need to relate the work of the lower pump and the work of the upper pump. Instead of one and two, let's actually do up and low. Let's do Work of low, work of low. Okay, and then again, and this is where I told you guys, watch out, right? Because if I just put energy there, it's not going to be right because I need to have power. I need to put power in all of them because the mass flow rate of the upper is not the same as the mass flow rate of this, the lower, right? So if I rewrite this, if I rewrite this, CLP, that will be the mass flow rate of the low. Times, or oh, we just did, right? Uh, one minus four divided by the mass flow rate of the low, and from one to two, so it could be h two minus h one, plus the mass flow rate of the upper one, and on that one we're going from state six, right, five to six. So this turns out to be well. The upper part we already know. We already just did. So that's 18 and 46. In the bottom part, we get on the low end we get 3.22. And on this side here we get 5.48. All in kilowatts as well. So the kilowatts get out of the picture. We have coefficient of performance dimension as as it's supposed to be. Um, 